Okay, so for today, here's our agenda. First, we're just welcoming, which is what we're in right now. So just getting everything ready. Uh, the water's warm. Come on in. This is great. We're then going to have an amazing keynote by Sarah Tate-Peterson. After that is complete, we're going to have our guides guide us through self-recommendation letters and how to create them. So we have Jane and Marnez is going to do that for us. Next, we're going to have a self-recommendation letter workshop where you're going to have time to work on your own to create your own self-recommendation letter. And you'll have your alone time for about 10 minutes to actually build one for yourself. And then we're going to come back. Then we're going to go into groups. And then you're going to be able to work with four or five other people to kind of work through on your letter. Did you really dig deep enough? Did you really find those things that empower you um, in order to tell someone else why you're so amazing. And then we're going to get back together for a final closing discussion. Um, we understand as many of you that may be here have other commitments and may only be able to stay for a certain amount of time. It's perfectly fine. Um, don't worry about it and keep going in the chat. It's all good. Robin Williams, that would be a really good one um, to be able to sit with him. So now let me just say a little bit about our team. So I have to recommend who is the actual BTA WIT group? And I do ask if everyone could just mute themselves. Mm -hmm. um, we do have, let's see, a hundred and... 155 people registered so far. We have 89 people in the room. So this is fantastic. Uh, so what is the BTA WIT group? So the WIT Women Plus IT group, and the reason for the plus is because it's inclusive of everyone. Um, this peer group was created in 2018 and sponsored by the BTAA CIOs to strengthen recruitment, retention, and advancement of women in IT across the Big Ten. This diverse group has been created mm -hmm. to expand connections to mm -hmm. one another and provide a place mm -hmm. for respectful dialogue, timely questions, broad sharing of best practices and insights. This group is open to staff, researchers, faculty, and administrators of all the Big Ten universities. If you like, you're welcome to visit our website at btaa.org slash technology and Big Ten Academic Alliance Women in IT group or Women in Technology group and visit our website so you can learn more about our events and the different things that we do. We do have uh, coffee catch-ups every single month. It's the third Wednesday of each month and we do have a calendar up on the website. Anyone is welcome to attend those sessions and what's fantastic about them, they're only 30 minutes. So it's quick and you get a chance to meet some amazing humans uh, across the country. So for this, conference uh, subcommittee, we have the following uh, volunteers that have been working tirelessly for the past several months to put this event together. So it's Jane Farrago, Laura Gordon, Betsy Hillary, Lauren Kuza, Mernaz Ahmadi Jubina, Nargis Osaki, Winona Snapchilds, and Stacy Zeiss. So I want to thank each and every one of you that have volunteered. Um, we couldn't have done this without you. So we really appreciate you and the time that you put into this. And as I mentioned, if you want to learn more about our Women in IT group, please visit our website and we can throw it in the chat. If someone could just throw it in the chat for me. That would be fantastic. Um, and keep in touch with us. Uh, it would be fun. It would be great. Thank you. And now... We're ready. We are ready for Miss Sarah. So let me just give you a quick, here we go. So let's talk about Sarah. Sarah Tate Peterson is a dynamic and seasoned IT leader and professional with 25 plus years experience. Sarah currently serves in the role of technical compliance manager for the College of Engineering at UW-Madison. In addition to this role, Sarah serves on the University of Wisconsin Madison's Committee for Women in the University, or CWU, and the College of Engineering's Committee for Academic Staff Interests, or CASI. 
Throughout Sarah's entire career, she's been an active participant and facilitator on a wide variety of strategic initiatives that promote inclusion, equity, diversity, and belonging in the workplace. Outside of her service to the UW-Madison University, Sarah enjoys opportunities to hike on our national parks, indulge in hobby geology, and most importantly, to build Lego. So with no further ado, I would like to give the honor and pass it over to my friend, Sarah. Um, so Sarah, turn on your video and unmute yourself so you can come on in. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Check, I check. can see you. I can hear you. And hold on a second. I'm going to just pin you. Give me a second. I'm going to spotlight you so you're up there. And I'm going to stop my share. You're ready to share your screen? Um, I will be in a moment, yes. Okay. I'm going to stop my share. And the floor is yours. Well, thank you, Laura. And you know, I was sitting here thinking about the icebreaker question. Hands down, I have to say the notorious RBG, empowered women, empower women. I also saw several folks out there who agree with me. Hello and good morning, everyone. And thank you again, Laura, for the wonderful introduction. I'd also take like to take this time to thank the members of the conference planning subcommittee the Big Ten Academic Alliance Women Plus and IT Steering Committee, and Program Manager Lori Frost for hosting this year's mini conference, Empower You, and for providing me with the opportunity to serve as your keynote speaker. It is an honor and a distinct pleasure to return to this community as a means to pay it forward. As I reflect back on my service to this community as a steering committee member, as chair and concluding my time as past chair last October, I wish to take this opportunity to express my gratitude and thank all of you for continuing to inspire and empower me. I'm hoping that I'll be able to provide you all with some things to think about leading into the self-recommendation letter workshop. Now, let's get down to brass tacks. I know I don't have a great deal of time as your keynote speaker to ignite passions, spark discussions and provoke thoughts. So let's jump right in with a brief yet meaningful activity to get us engaged and get our creative juices flowing. I like words, I'm big on definitions. So to kick things off, I'm gonna to try to share my screen, fingers crossed. Did I share it? All right, there we go. Excellent, amazing. So let's think about the definition of empower. It's a verb. It means to give someone official or legal authority or the freedom or confidence to do something. Pulled this right from the Cambridge Dictionary. So in your own words, how do you define the word empower? When, where, how, what, or who makes you feel empowered? And how would you describe the feeling of being empowered? Take a second or two to think about those questions. And if you have something you wish to share, please throw it in the chat. And where is chat? For me, I uh, would describe empower as being given the green light to execute on an idea, a project, a vision, a dream. In addition to having access to resources, people and support to help me get to the finish line. Let's take a peek at the chat here. Oh yeah, encourage, embracing autonomy, encouraging others, the ability to complete what is needed, trusted to succeed. These are all amazing. Now let's take the next step and think about adding you and empowering you. So I'm gonna stop sharing for a moment. Certainly when we think about empowering ourselves, 
this can be a challenging concept to wrap one's brain around. There are many obstacles and landmines that potentially lay in wait for us if we consider taking the initiative, meaning to be bold and take risks, engaging in an exercise that requires self-reflection, viewing ourselves from an objective and positive perspective, a state of being that allows us to dance the night away and skip down the street, embracing and celebrating our individual character, strengths, and accomplishments. All right, so I'm going to share my screen again. So let's talk about some self-empowerment challenges, obstacles, and landmines. I'll admit, we are our own worst critics. Cliche, but true. I'm only a mere mortal and subject to getting down on myself when I'm quickly falling into the quicksand. <clears throat> I also don't hold back when I'm in the company of those I trust. Case in point, I recently had a colleague look me eye and ask the question, are you as hard on others as you are on yourself? I had to pause on that one and think for a minute. And in all honesty, specifically, I was thinking about my husband. The answer, of course, was no, I'm not. Imposter syndrome, doubting our own abilities and feeling like we don't measure up, when in reality, we should trust our gut, because we do. This is a more common occurrence for me than I'd like to admit. For what it's worth, I have found a couple of life hacks that I've come to rely on. Number one, aside from LinkedIn, several years ago, quit social media. I found that it caused me way too much anxiety. And at the end of the day, it did not bring me any satisfaction nor joy. Number two, again, going back to relying on those in my network with whom I trust. I say it out loud and I call it out. By taking this action, it opens up a dialogue whereby most often the other person that I'm talking to is either experiencing imposter syndrome or has experienced imposter syndrome recently themselves. This action has the effect of turning the moment into a constructive coaching session, whereby both parties acknowledge and walk away from the conversation feeling empowered. And then there are biases in many different forms, including others in our own. Gender, racial, age, ethnicity, prove it again, confirmation. I'm gonna skip biases for now because we could take a whole day dialoguing on that topic. And yes, I do have my own. We also have forces outside the workplace that impact our ability to be our best selves, personally and professionally. Family care and priorities, financial struggles, caring for an ailing relative, personal injury or long-term illness, forgetting to pick up a gallon of milk at the store on your way home from work. Of course, not all outside forces are necessarily negative. There may be other things going on in your life that may take priority at any given time. You may be welcoming a new member into your family maybe trying to advance your education and skill set, sell, buy, and or build a new home, or planning for that long-awaited family vacation. Stop sharing for a moment here. So when we think about the process of empowering ourselves, as long as we are mindful of challenges, obstacles, and landmines, and are committed to doing the hard work, we can give ourselves the permission to believe in our power and realize how we can exceed our own expectations. All right, now that we've touched on some challenges, obstacles, and landmines, we can be mindful to look out for, let's move on and look at some ways that you can empower you.
Self-empowerment starts with taking an objective point of view of yourself and engaging in some self-reflection. Thank you for your grace. Several years ago, I decided that I was going to study myself and figure out my modus operandi. I found out it's an ongoing project. However, there have been several aha moments along the way that, I've, that have changed my life. For one, as outwardly engaging as I seem to be, after reading Susan Cain's Quiet, I realized that I'm very much an introvert. And I require a lot of quiet time to myself at home after a long day of meetings. Remember to focus on your strengths and what you contribute as an individual team member. If you are interested in diving deeper into exploring your strengths, there are many great resources and assessments out there. Two resources that I highly recommend are Clifton Strengths as well as Clifton Strengths for Leaders. And don't worry, I have a resources slide at the end of this slide deck that I'll be sharing out that has all of this information. Moving on, think about what makes you the person that you are, your character, your moral compass. Say what you feel, mean what you say. Reflect on your journey, your growth, and the nuggets of wisdom you have learned along the way. Embrace failure. This is a big one. You'll be surprised at the resiliency you build from facing and overcoming challenges. At this point in my life, I have learned to expect and welcome failure. Prioritize your time ruthlessly. It's finite. Remember those in your professional network, your colleagues, leadership, and mentors that have impacted you. Express your gratitude for their support and guidance. Make new connections, be curious, have meaningful discussions, Ask for feedback and learn from others' wisdom and experiences. Acknowledge the kudos and accolades you've received for your efforts and your individual and team accomplishments and take pride in your achievements. I, for one, do have a hard time doing it. So I know many um, in my circle also as well. Find a catharsis, for example, my greatest ideas and epiphanies are when I'm driving solo in my car. And at any time during your self-reflection, when the obstacles or landmines begin to creep in, keep a positive perspective. Acknowledge the feelings. Remind yourself that we are all human. Then do your best to let it go and don't look back. And finally, Always remember to put on your oxygen mask first. Be kind to yourself. And yes, I'm going to quote my colleague Manda here. You can do hard things. As you participate in the workshop, think about your journey. Recall the stories and antidotes that speak to your individual accomplishments, assets, and strengths. Remember community engagements and those individuals in your professional network that have impacted you. These experiences, these people, they empower you. Seize this opportunity to step outside your comfort zone, to introspect, and to focus on your strengths and experiences. Reflect on the impact you've made throughout your professional journey. By sharing your experiences during this workshop, you will not only inspire those around you, but you will also empower yourselves. This sense of accomplishment is a testament to your potential. So let's continue to learn, grow, and inspire each other. Once again, thank you for this amazing opportunity. I encourage and empower you to carry forward the insights and inspirations you learned from this mini conference into your professional and personal lives, continuing to make a difference in your own unique ways. Thank you. Back to you, Laura. Okay, we ready? 
Sarah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I thank you. And what I'd love is for all of you in the chat to start giving your love back to Sarah with what did you get out of this? Um, what most empowered you? And I just want to go over a couple of key takeaways. Um, we'll call it the mantra from Sarah. I'm saying Sarah because it rhymes, right? Or mantra and Sarah, you know, we want it to rhyme, right? Be bold, take risks, live life freely, lead by example, trust your gut, say what you feel, mean what you say, express gratitude, believe in your power, exceed your expectations, dance the night away, skip down the street, don't take no for an answer, be your best self, and don't look back. So Sarah, I want to thank you so much for your beautiful, beautiful keynote. I think that is giving us exactly what we need for our next steps of the guide. So thank you. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to continue with our guides. So the next part of this session is we're going to have two amazing people. They're gonna walk us through how to create your own self-recommendation letter. And let me, hold on, I'm going to introduce each first and then I'm going to give them the floor. So first we have, we have two, Jane Farargo, is a senior manager of customer experience in the Office of Technology and Digital Innovation at The Ohio State University. She is responsible for managing desktop support technicians across campus, mm -hmm. including the Office of the President. She has 18 years of experience in IT support services. And then our other guide is Mirnaz Ahmadi Jubine, who is a senior BI developer in data, academic planning and institutional research, mm -hmm at the UW-Madison campus. Her main responsibility is supporting the technology and developers community across campus. She has 10 plus years of experience in IT. So Jane, I am going to give you the floor and where'd you go? Okay, let me throw you in the spotlight. There we go, Jane, go All ahead. Right. I am here. Thank you, everyone. Um, so first of all, I wanted to read to you a, a quote that we all decided was very inspirational for our theme, which is our self-recommendation letter. Um, so the quote is, everything you ever wanted is learning how to draw it out of yourself because you are that powerful. And that quote is by Luma Leah. So we thought that that was pretty inspirational when it comes to uh, setting ourselves up to write our own self-recommendation letter. So what exactly is a self-recommendation letter? Um, Indeed.com definition is as follows, and I will read it directly. The purpose of a self-recommendation focuses on portraying your strengths, your strongest skills, and your work ethic through self-reflection which maybe sounds a little bit easier said than done. Um, I know that maybe we've tried to do this in the past. Um, so we've tried to identify some steps to make it a little bit easier as we move into the next workshop part. So we have some steps. We can go to, yep, there we go. Um, we can kind of categorize them in three different fields. We can identify our skills. Uh, we can provide examples, specific examples, um, and then lay those out to help write our endorsement letter. And to kind of drill down a little bit more into that, things to include in these different steps are, you know, be as positive as you can. This is your time to shine. This is your recommendation letter to, you know, try to propel you in your career potentially. Um, so this is all about you. And I know sometimes it's a little bit hard to sit down and write your own strengths or boast about yourself. Um, so, you know, laying out notes ahead of time uh, makes it a little bit easier to, to prepare and then get ready to write your letter. So while you're doing that, you can also think about your accomplishments and name specific accomplishments um, that show your value 
and provide examples, detailed examples as well, um, so that we can really highlight your strengths during this uh, the, during this process. So sometimes, you know, as we talk about, you know, writing these letters, it is hard to write it in the first person. So something we have found that might be helpful is to write it almost in the third person, like write it for somebody else as you are recommending somebody else to do something. Um, might be a little bit easier to do it that way. Um, and then you can go back at the end and kind of uh, rewrite it to, to focus on yourself. So as we talk about those overviews, um, I will pass it to Manaz, who actually had the uh, the luxury of writing her own recommendation letter, and she will be able to share with you uh, the template, as well as uh, maybe some of her struggles writing her own recommendation letters. So I will pass it to Manaz. Thank you very much, uh, Jane. Uh, yes, uh, let's uh, go right into it. Um, I'm going to show you an example and a, and a template. Let's start with the template. So when you are writing your own uh, recommendation letter, um, going through those steps that Jane um, just mentioned, uh, you start uh, by an introduction. Okay, who are you, right? And then another paragraph about what you do, right? Your experience and all that. And then the third one is going to be what um, what others think about you. What is uh, how do others see you and your contributions? And then the last one is bringing them all together and um, uh, endorse yourself, basically. Uh, and then the, you you can sign it. This is uh, basically what it is. And I went through that and wrote my letter. I have to say it was very, very difficult. Uh, I felt like a self-absorbed person who is bragging about herself. So, because I'm great at criticizing myself, but I had to force myself to appreciate my accomplishments and contributions. What I did, I did the tip. I wrote, uh, I used to have students, I used to teach. So I used to write recommendation letters for them. So I wrote for one of them and then... I switched the, of course, the role and um, everything that is about me and my name. Uh, and I was going to also take away the adverbs and um, adjectives and all that. And I thought, okay, if I write this for another person, I would leave them in and I wouldn't take them out. So I left them in. So uh, let's go to the example and take a look at that. And as we um, remember our template, let's go through this. So I'm gonna read that. Dear me, uh, I'm writing this letter to highly recommend Mernaz, who has been serving as a senior business intelligence developer at UW Madison's Heart of Data. I've had the pleasure of working closely with Mernaz and have been consistently impressed by her exceptional skills, dedication, contributions to the team. So this is the introduction part. Who are you? Right. So write it uh, um, very short. And also what I do, what Mernas does. Mernas has proven herself as an in invaluable member of our organization, demonstrating a profound level of problem solving as the main Tableau site server admin and support for multiple UW Madison institutional servers, as well as other solutions. Mernas has showcased her technical prowess uh, through bringing in new innovations, successfully supporting our users and developers community across campus and providing consultation on technology and best practices to different technical and non-technical units. So basically describing what you do. Now um, your contribution, like how others see you. And this is, I had the luxury of having done um, a few of those self-assessment. I sent it out to people, they self uh, they assessed me, uh, evaluated me, and sent me. So this is this was a bit easier. So Mernaz's dedication extends beyond her technical and leadership roles. She has built trusting relationships with stakeholders, becoming a reliable liaison between departments and IT services. Her efforts in mentorship and community involvement, including training students and actively participating in IT communities across campus, underscore her commitment to fostering a collaborative and supportive work environment. So, and now the, for the last part, we are bringing everything together 
and we are self-endorsing also ourselves. In summary, Mernaz is an outstanding professional who brings a wealth of expertise, leadership, and dedication to her role and beyond. I have no doubt that she will continue to excel in her future endeavors. I wholeheartedly recommend Mernaz for any position or project that demands a highly skilled and motivated individual. Sincerely, me. So uh, just if you follow that structure introduction, what do I do? what others see me do and endorse myself, uh, you should be fine. And you can go ahead and have fun with it. And with that, I'm going to pass it over and back to Laura and go from there. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm hoping everyone can hear me, right? Why is that still on? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to our amazing guides. And I also want to thank Betsy, who gave them some guidance in, in the beginning of all of this on how to be a guide. Uh, we kind of discovered this guide concept at our last conference and it worked. So now we have to get the work done. So again, I want to thank everyone getting up until this point. And now it's on you. So first of all, the PowerPoint that you're looking at right now, I sent a link in the chat to it on Google Drive. So you can download it. So you have the template, you have all the verbiage, you have everything at your disposal. So if you can click on that link that I just sent in the chat. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take 10 minutes for yourself to complete the template, okay? Um, during the 10 minutes, what you want to think about is your strengths, right? So you have your strengths. Think about situations that you excelled in. So what specific situations did you say, I really did that. I'm really proud of myself for doing that. This is the time to brag. This is the time to showcase yourself. Think about your honorable character. And then also be sure to include any community engagement that may have impacted you. So take this time for yourself. You can turn off your camera. I will keep up um, the, the slides here so you can see the example. So I'm gonna keep this up right here, the Dear Me, to kind of just keep you focused. But turn off your camera, take 10 minutes, and we'll be back right now, my clock. And actually, I'm going to give you an extra four minutes because it is a good time if you need a bio break or you need a quick break. Um, the other thing I want to note is I am going to turn off the recording at this point because things that we share as a group, we're not going to put in the recording. Um, so just so you know, we are going to pause the recording. So our recording that we will put up online will have everything up until now and then probably the closing at the end. So... Let's say my clock says 1036. Some of you say 936. So we're going to get back at exactly 950 or 1050. So you have 14 minutes, which is enough time for you to grab a coffee, stretch a little bit. Don't leave. Come on back. Right. And um, and take your time. This is your time for yourself. So I'll see you in right now in 13 minutes. And if you have questions, throw it in the chat. We'll be there for you. Thanks. Okay, let me share my screen. All right, I wanna thank everyone again for coming in and joining with us. And number one, we want your feedback. So um, if Nargis, could you just share the link um, for feedback? So please tell us what you thought, tell us what you want us to do more of. Uh, that would be fantastic um, to make these events better. We need to hear from you. That's number one. Um, our next event is going to be on March 20th. And as I mentioned, anyone's welcome to come to our coffee catch-ups. 
uh, you could visit our website. Uh, and from that, you will get what the Zoom link is in order to get into the coffee catch up. There's no registration. There's no barriers, nothing. Just show up. It's 30 minutes of your time. That's it. Um, if you haven't been to a coffee catch up before, basically the format is the first five minutes, there's some kind of topic. Then you go into breakout rooms, similar to what you did today. You have a discussion in a safe place for about 15, 20 minutes. You come back in, you say how much fun you had, and you go back to your regular workday. So if you do that once a month for 30 minutes, you're going to have the opportunity to meet with other people in the Big Ten Alliance, um, identifying in all different ways. Uh, it's a very diverse group, and you're going to learn a lot about yourself and about others. So highly recommend if you can come. Um, it's always the third uh, Wednesday. And on our website, I'll just bring up the website real quick. Uh, let's see. Um, so we have this one. Um, I don't remember offhand who's doing the next one. Um, I think it's on SharePoint is in April, right? I think SharePoint is in April because Marnez, you, you did a flip-flop, I think, or yeah. So we're yes. doing SharePoint in April. Um, I'm going to pause for a second. Hold on, because I have the list for anyone that wants. I happen to put it on the Rutgers website. So the Rutgers has a women in IT group. And I also encourage you, if you're um, whatever university you're at, if you have a women in IT group at your university, please share the information about this group with your local group, um, because we can all be working together. So on the Rutgers space, I do include, um, it's wit.rutgers.edu. And I do have a calendar of different events. Um, so we have the wellness. Um, this is a local event for Rutgers. Um, the 17th, ah, April is the guidance for new and younger people in the workforce. And then in May, we have learning about SharePoint. And then in June, we're doing continual improvement. So we're already booked out till June. Um, and then in August, as I mentioned before, we have um, the session in neurodivergency in the workplace. So we're gonna be coming up with additional sessions. If you have ideas of sessions that you'd like us to talk about, if you click on the bottom button right here, you could submit for your ideas for topics. Be careful if you submit a topic we're going to ask you to host, right? So, but hosting no is- No good deed goes unpunished. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And from Wicked, which is one of my favorite movies. Anyway, um, so to host, your requirement is you come up with like a three minute intro, four minutes of whatever the topic is, and then everyone goes to breakout rooms. That's your job, that's it. You don't need a slideshow, you don't need- anything, um, just the concept of a topic. You don't even have to be the expert in the topic. Um, in fact, the person that asked about new in the workplace, when, when she asked to do it, I said, well, why don't you host it? Because you're younger and you're in the workplace. Wouldn't you be a great person to host it? She's like, well, I thought I was going to get information from people. I'm like, yes, you will. Um, so anyway, you don't have to be an expert in it. Um, just be willing to host and, uh, it would be uh, it would be great. We'd love to hear from you. So, does anyone have anything else that they'd like to add, or anything else before we close out? All right. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone for coming in. I hope you had a great day and a meaningful day, and. Uh, We'll see you at the next one. And to all of the volunteers that have helped, if you want to just wave and put your video camera on and thank you to this amazing, amazing group of humans that put this entire session together, we couldn't have done it without you. And thank you for all the people that participated. Have a great day, everybody.